Hi, and welcome to the first restoration video from Uncle Lem's Clock Shop. If you like the content, and I sure hope you do, I hope you'll subscribe. I don't post a ton of videos because each project takes a lot of time, but I will try to make each one enjoyable. Today's restoration is a bit of a mystery clock. It was purchased literally from a hoarder house. The guy probably had 30 or more clocks. He said they had belonged to his father, but I have a feeling he picked most of them up at garage sales or in the case of this one, maybe at the city dump. I say a mystery clock because it has no manufacturer identification whatsoever. Now, it's not all that unusual to have clocks without any obvious name on the dial or the case, but it is quite rare when there's no label on the inside or some mark somewhere on the movement. But here, there is nothing to help us identify it or determine how old it is. One of the first impressions of this clock case is that the veneer is spectacularly ugly. It is a highly contrasting tiger stripe uh, grain, which was probably stylish at one time. But ugh, if anything good can be said about it, it's that it's just beat up enough that there's no way that we would attempt to salvage it at Uncle Lem's. The movement is completely disassembled. Now, I take a lot of digital images of each step here and make sketches of the more complicated assemblies. Having these when it comes time to reassemble the movement is helpful because while mechanical clock movements all basically work on the same principle, how the engineers and designers accomplish that goal can vary in small ways. And sometimes there are assemblies that require a little bit of finesse to make them work properly. While the internal parts of the movement are being scrubbed in the ultrasonic, the movement plates are cleaned and polished and rinsed in very hot water and then dried, and then sprayed with a special lacquer made for brass to ward off future tarnishing. The metal rods you see fill the pivot holes to prevent the lacquer from intruding inside, which might gum up the pivots and create a lot of unwanted friction. After cleaning and reassembly, the movement is mounted on the new quarter-inch mahogany plywood back. The original back was rotted so badly it could not be salvaged. The last roll for the old back was to be a template for the new one, providing the exact points to drill holes and to make sure the movement aligns with the dial when we reassemble the clock. Then it was time to move on to the case. Oh my God, that veneer looks like something out of a 1960s bad movie. <laughs> that had to go. Thankfully, I had some leftover rosewood raw veneer from a previous project, and... Uh, I was able to get rid of this ugly stuff. The case was re-glued using a ratchet strap clamp that was accessed from Harbor Freight. It's a very handy tool for projects like this. Now, I'll be the first to admit that veneering is not my cup of tea, and attempting to veneer around the curved face of that door was way outside my ability. So I elected to get it as smooth as possible and then paint the door a satin black. The brass dial was also too far gone to save, so a new dial was created in Photoshop and then printed on cardstock. This becomes an overlay, which is glued over the top of the original dial. The blocky number font is very close to the original. In keeping with my belief that this is probably a French clock, I elected to make it a souvenir from the 1889 Paris World's Fair. The center of the dial is a cropped and shrunken version of an actual poster from the World's Fair. Inside and behind the pendulum bob on that new back, there are other references to that World's Fair. The left side is a train ticket that included admission to the fair, and it overlays a map of the fair area, which was centered around the brand new Eiffel Tower in Paris. And here's the World's Fair French clock finished. The black door contrasts nicely to the rosewood case. The movement runs incredibly well, and the replacement dial has just enough Photoshop aging to make it look like it could be original. Just to remind you how far it's come, here's a before and after comparison. This clock was actually done for use in my own home. It now hangs in our breakfast nook, and the gong-style chime is quite rich. The clock keeps very accurate time. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if so, I hope you'll subscribe to see some of the restorations yet to come from Uncle Lem's Clock Shop.